and welcome to this video on UiPath. In this one, we'll take a look at some database operations. Also, at the end, we'll take a look at parameters. So, let's get to it. So, we're inside Studio, and when working with databases, the first thing you want to make sure is that you have the UiPath database activities package imported. If not, do it in the Manage Packages dialog. So I already have a small uh, sequence here with a connection to a database that is being established and then disconnected in these two activities. So we want to insert some stuff here in the middle where we want to perform some data work. So in the activities uh, toolbox, we go to the app integration group to database group, and then we have these activities. I already did a video on the connect, disconnect and start transaction. Uh, there's a link to that below. And so we'll start with the execute query uh, activity here. The execute query activity basically takes two important parameters, a connection and an instruction to the database on what to return. So the connection we already have, and I have a variable called my connection that I uh, created in this activity. See that here? So we'll use that uh, connection and then we'll write a short query here. So select everything from the players table. So let's quickly take a look at the database we're working with. I have a small database called FIFA. It only has one uh, table in it called players. And if we do a quick select on that table, we can see that we have a good handful of players here. So when selecting this group of players, we want to return those players to our sequence here. And we do that by creating a variable to put the data table in. So we create a variable and we'll call it DT players. And if we look in the variables pane here, then we can see we now have a DT players variable of the type data table. So how do we see this data? Well, a very simple way is to do a write range activity from the system file work group, a uh, workbook group. So we'll do that down here and we'll put in the name of the workbook that we want to insert the data into. And if we look at that file, we have that in this folder. And if I open it, we can see that the file is empty. We want to write into sheet one of the workbook. And what we want to write into it is, of course, the DT players table. So if we run the sequence now, it'll finish in just a second. There we go. And if we then open the folder and take a look inside the file, we can see that it inserted the different players. So since we're going to work with this file uh, a bit more, I'm going to do another activity called write cell. I'm going to insert that here at the top of our sequence. And basically it'll write to that same workbook, to that same sheet, but we'll write to the range from A1 to let's say K30. And we'll just insert a blank space. And that means every time we run this sequence, we'll actually clear the workbook first, then we'll work with it and insert some data. So let's try and change our query a little bit. So we'll change it from selecting all of the players to only selecting the players where country is equal to, we'll say, Brazil. We'll run it again. And we'll look in the workbook. And we can see that now there's only Diego Costa in here. We'll close it again. Go back to Studio. Now, there's another way of doing this, because maybe it's not always Brazil we want to select. So, for example, if we want to uh, get some input from the user, we'll use an input dialog. So, please enter player info, and then we will ask for the country, and we'll uh, let them type it in a text box, and then whatever the user enters, we'll put in a new variable called str country. And if we look at the variables, we can now see that we have the my connection, we have the DT players data table, and then we have the string called str country. So if we want to use that variable in our query, we can do two things. Now, what many of you may have done previously is done something like this, where you do some string concatenation 
where you do something like this, where you actually end the query string and then add the country variable value and then insert at the end another single quote. And this will actually work if I add another plus here. So this will actually do exactly the same thing, except it will, of course, ask for the country first. So let's try and do that. And it asks for the country. We will type Denmark. And it finishes. We go into the folder, open the file, and we see now it's Michael Outrup that's in here. We'll close it back up, go back to Studio. And then we'll look at parameters, because this is not the most elegant way of doing uh, this uh, parameterization. What we can do instead of doing this string concatenation, we can use a parameter. And we do that by clicking the parameters button here, creating a parameter called, for example, at country. This parameter is an incoming parameter. It is of type string. And the value we want that parameter to hold is the str country value that we entered before. Now, then we can, we can change the query from this mess to just simply adding the country parameter name here. So this is a lot cleaner and a lot uh, more stable. And if you were doing uh, some .NET uh, development, you know that it's also more secure. So we'll just click OK. We'll run it again. And we get the dialog and we'll type Brazil. Click OK. It finishes. We open the folder, open the file. And we can see that now it's Diego Costa again. So that's all good. And that's a very simple example of using parameters. Now there's one more property that I should mention, and that is the command type property. We're using the type of text right now. And that means that we have to type out a SQL query in our SQL uh, field here. We could also use a stored procedure. And that means we would just type the name of the stored procedure here. And a stored procedure, if you don't know, that's sort of a function inside, for example, in a, a SQL server that will perform some kind of action. For example, select some text. We could also choose table direct, and that would just let us enter just the name of the table that we want to select. It will give us the whole table, but then we can do some filtering and selection and sorting on the data table object later on if we want. Now, this one, table direct, you have to be careful with because it's not supported by all providers. If we look at the connection up here, we're using the system data SQL client provider. And that library actually does not support the table direct uh, command type. So, so be careful with that. I usually just use good old SQL like we do down here. So let's move on to execute non-query. We'll drag that in. And um, we'll delete a few of these activities first. We're not going to write to our workbook anymore. So we'll delete those activities. And um, we'll move the execute non-query down to below the connect activity. So what's different about execute non-query? Well, it doesn't return a data table. It returns an integer over here in the output. So if I create a new variable called modified rows, that is exactly what this will return is the number of, well, not modified, but affected rows. So whatever SQL query we write here, whatever that results in inside the database, however many rows that affects, that is the number we'll get back from the database. So for example, if I took um, and wrote an update statement, update players set country equals to Spain, where, uh, let's say, last name is equal to Costa. Now, for those of you who follow football or soccer, you'll know that, uh, or you might know, that Diego Costa changed his nationality from Brazilian to Spanish a few years ago. So this will actually do that. Now, the result of that query should uh, be one because we are only changing one record when doing this. We have this little blue icon up here, meaning there's something missing. And that is we need to tell it which connection to use. Then we'll just do a simple message box. And we will just write out the modified rows variable and convert it to a string. 
So if we run this, we should execute a non-query, meaning we're not getting data back. We're only getting an integer back. Uh, but otherwise, this activity is very uh, much like the execute query activity. But let's try it out. And we got the one back. And if we go into the database, we can see here that Diego Costa says Brazil. But if we run this query again, it'll have changed to Spain. All right, back in the studio. Now, there's one activity left that we want to look at, and that is the insert activity. And that, again, is very much like the execute non-query activity in that we get the number of affected rows back from the database. But the way we insert data into the database is a little bit different. Because here we can do it by feeding it a data table. So let's build a data table. So we have three columns. The last one was country. And then this one, the first one will be first name. The second one will be last name. And that will be of type string. And we'll click OK. Now we will just insert one little uh, record here and we'll, we'll put in Henrik Larsson and he was a Swede. So we'll type in Sweden. Now we have a data table to insert. We can even add another row here. Let's insert, we'll go old school and insert Peter Shilton. And we'll type in England. Click OK. And now we can use the insert activity to insert this data table that we built up here. We need to remember to create a variable for it. We'll call it DT new players. And then down here, we say, okay, that data table DT new players is what we want to insert. We want to insert it into the players table in the database. And we want to use the my connection connection to do it. And then, of course, we will write out the result, the affected records, to the modified rows variable, and then write that into our message box. So let's try and run it. It returned two because we inserted two rows, and it finished. And if we go to the database, execute our query, we can see that Peter Shilton was added as well as Henrik Larsson. So this concludes my video on the database operations. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, you're welcome to uh, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.